let's take a look at another example. So you'll notice this is the same exact sentence, but instead of state says, I have underlined the verb phrase is going to, is going to. You might recognize this as being used to describe future tense, right? Is going to. Uh, but I want to just, just let's double check, Let, just for fun. So I'm, I'm always, sometimes I just always reset just to make sure it's, it's a clean search, right? So I'm going to type in here is going to, and I'm going to see that frequency by section. And look at this, again, very dramatic results if you are only looking at the visual aids, right? Uh, we can see is going to, highly used in spoken language, right? Over 300, and, uh, over 300 times per million words does this phrase appear. So that's a pretty, pretty good frequency. We look at academic English, man, very low when compared with other forms. So again, we know that, uh, we might know that we can use other um, verb forms to describe future tense. One of those verb forms is will plus a verb, right? So we can see that is going to not used very frequently. Maybe we do some research and we're like, what about will plus verb, will make, right? Will make, but um, I'm just going to look up will and then I'm going to add in a part of speech verb. So you can see here the slight difference from our previous search. I have a space here. So I want to look up will plus verb, okay? I'm going to see frequency by section. And look at this. Um, frequency, uh, raw numbers are very high. Uh, per million, uh, very high in all contexts, right? Even though it's used less frequently in academic language when compared to the other contexts, I can see that raw number almost 1100 times per million words this phrase is used. So um, you can see also it's kind of scattered. It's, there's not really too much of a pattern that, that you can see exactly. So this would tell me that uh, this is probably uh, uh, very acceptable to use in academic formal contexts. And again, if you wanted to double check, in some different contexts, you can click up here. It's going to give you this. And, and again, it's fairly spread out among different disciplines. So again, I wouldn't worry about using this in an academic context. Uh, let's look at just one other example really briefly. Um, so another thing that we can use here is we can check some logical connectors, right? So I have this uh, sentence right here, logical connectors usually occur at the beginning of sentences. They are uh, words and phrases that um, logically connect what came in the previous sentence to what is what you are introducing in the current sentence. So here we have this logical connector besides. Um, so you, again, you might say, oh, you know, this is fine in academic contexts, but let's just double check. Let's double check. Um, I'm highlighting chart. Now I'm going to do something here. Uh, you will notice when I included this punctuation, this comma here, I want to include that punctuation because I want to capture this as a logical connector, right? We can use the word besides in many different parts of a sentence, but I want to capture this in the beginning of a sentence, okay? So you will notice that I actually added a space in between the word and the punctuation. I did that because when you are including punctuation in searches, you need to put in that space due to how COCA codes the data that you are searching for. I'm going to see frequency by section. Let me zoom out and take a look here. Um, academic language, very infrequently used, especially when compared to some other uh, uh, contexts as well. Highly used in fiction, highly used in TV and movie subtitles. Um, not really used. It's, it's really funny. The, the only section that it is less commonly used in academic language is spoken, right? Um, so what would this tell me? This would tell me that 
using besides as a logical connector probably is not very academic. So again, I would want to find an, uh, something to replace this with. Again, think about what you are trying to do. You are trying to add something perhaps in this newer sentence. So what other logical connecting phrases could I put at the beginning? Uh, one that immediately comes to mind is in addition, okay? So again, very briefly, let's look at in addition. And again, space, comma. Oops. Make sure you always have the correct search function highlighted. In a chart function, in addition, and, and look at how frequently this is used in academic contexts in compared with other ones. So again, um, this is a very uh, useful search tool. Um, this will give you an excellent guidance in, in double checking your vocabulary and some of your grammar uses to ensure that what you are using is formal and academic language. Remember to take all of those data points into consideration, uh, frequency, overall frequency, but also the normalized per million uh, words as well when you are, when you are uh, checking your own writing. That's all for this video. Uh, thank you very much and stay tuned for future videos.